so the next topic which we are studying is cell the unit of life so initially we will study about some names of the scientists no, who have identified a cell who have identified a living cell who have identified a plant cell and who have identified that cells are formed from pre-existing cells only. So all the names of the scientists, first of all, we will study. Okay. So first of all, what is a cell? Cell is a fundamental structure, structural and functional unit of all living organisms. So whatever functions which are performed in the human body, they are only because of cells only. You know? So, first discovery of cell was done by whom? Discovery of cell was done by Robert Hooke. One minute. First discovery of cell was done by Robert Hooke. So then Anton von Leeuwenhoek first observed and described a live cell. Live cell means what? A cell which has life. Living cell was first identified and it was described by whom? It was described by Anton von Leeuwen. So these names also you are supposed to remember. So, first discovery of cell was done by Robert Hooke and a living cell was described by Antony van Leeuwenhoek. Clear no? So, next we have one more information, Cork cells. Cork cells were discovered by Hooke and these Cork cells, they were dead cells. What kind of cells were they? Dead cells. So, these dead cells were first identified by Robert Hooke. Okay. The invention of compound and electron microscope revealed the structural details of the cell. So we know what is meant by compound microscope and we know what is meant by electron microscope. So electron microscopes works on the principle of diffraction of an electron where it is believed that electron behaves like a wave also. So the magnification ability of this electron microscope is very much. So therefore, even the structure of cell also could be studied with the help of this electron microscope. Okay. Then Malthus Scleden observed that plants are also, they are composed of cells. So it means a total plant system is composed of cells. So this was the statement and observation which was done by whom? It was done by Malthus Scleden. Clear man? Next comes Theodore Squan. So Theodore Squan reported that cells has a thin outer layer which is called as plasma membrane. He also found that plant cells have cell wall. We know that only plant cells have cell wall, animal cells does not have a cell wall. So he identified initially that who Theodore Squan. He identified that only plants have cell wall. Okay. And he identified the presence of a membrane also, which is called as plasma membrane. So outside this plasma membrane, you can find cell wall in the case of uh, plant cells. Clear now? So Theodrosquan proposed a hypothesis that animals and plants are composed of cells and they may be products of cells itself. Clear? It means total animal and human life, it is completely made up of cells and only because of the cells only life was possible. So that was the hypothesis or uh, the imagination of whom? Theodore Squan. So Scleden and Squan, both of them, they formulated cell theory. So this is also an important bit which you should remember. So who proposed cell theory? Scleden and Squan proposed the cell theory. Okay. 
Next, Rudolf Virchow explained that cells are divided and new cells are formed from pre-existing cells. So we know this concept you know, with the help of mitosis and meiosis, new cells are formed from old cells. So this concept was first of all it was identified by Rudolf Virchow. Clear? So this concept he named it as omnis cellula e cellula. It means that from the old cells, new cells will come into existence. So therefore he modified the cell theory. Cell theory was proposed by whom? Sladen and Squire. And it was modified by whom? It was modified by Rudolf Hirsch. Clear? No? So statements of cell theory, all living organisms are composed of cells and product of cells. All cells arise from pre-existing cells itself. Okay? So basically, this cell, if you want to divide broadly, then broadly I can divide into two types. So the total living matter which is called as cytoplasm and the component or structural mechanism of producing proteins which is called as ribosomes. So total cell component of cell I can divide only into two types. One is cytoplasm and the second one is the ribosomes. So what is meant by cytoplasm? It is a semi-liquid type of substance. It is not a completely liquid, it is not completely solid also. Semi-liquid. Are you able to understand a semi-liquid type of substance where all the living uh, reactions, chemical reactions as well as other organisms, they are floating in this semi-fluid type of matrix. So that a living life uh, like liquid that we call it as cytoplasm. Clear number? So a semi-fluid matrix where cellular activities and chemical reactions occur, they keep the cell in living state. So ribosomes, so non-membrane brown bound organs found in cytoplasm, chloroplast, mitochondria and on rough endoplasmic retina. Okay ma? So this arrangement of ribosomes, where these ribosomes are present, this is also very important. So question can be asked on presence of ribosomes also. So they may be floating in uh, cytoplasm, they may be present on chloroplast. They may be present on mitochondria and they will be present on rough endoplasmic reticulum also. So these are the arrangements of these ribosomes. So what is the main function of these ribosomes? Synthesis of proteins is the main function of the ribosome. Manufacturing of proteins. So there will be a chain which is called as mRNA. So to this mRNA, these ribosomes get attached and polypeptide chains will be produced. And a group of polypeptide chains, chains is nothing but proteins. Understood? Number? So this manufacturing of proteins basically, it is only because of ribosomes. Clear? No? Next. So here there is, he gave some uh, comparison about the type of cells which we have. Huh? Okay. Huh? Okay. So smallest cell, which is the smallest cell? Huh? Mycoplasma, so it is a type of bacteria. Yeah, no? And what is the size? So bits can be asked beyond the sizes also. So 0 0.3 micrometer in length. Very small size. Micro means 10 power minus 16. So 0 0.3 into 10 power minus 6 is the size of mycoplasmas. It is also a type of genus in the case of bacteria. Yeah, no? So uh, these mycoplasmas, they do not have a cell wall. A cell wall is absent. Largest isolated single cell is the egg of an ostrich. This also we know. Egg of an ostrich is the largest single celled cell. Longest cell. Nerve cells are longest cells. We know nerve cells, no? Their length is very long. So, longest cells belongs to nerve cells. And the size of the bacteria is how much? Size of the bacteria is 3 to 5 micrometer. Okay, it is very large when compared to mycoplasmas. Mycoplasma is only 0 0.3 micrometer, whereas bacteria it is 3 to 5 micrometer. And human RBC, human RBC is 7 micrometer. It means a bit bigger when compared to the size of a bacteria. Clear, no? And uh, which is the smallest one? This is what you call virus. It is further smaller. Even when compared to the size of the smallest cells also, Virus will be very, very, very small. So here you can see this virus is, what is their size? 
it is 0 0.02 to 0 0.2 micrometer that is the size of a virus next pplv what is meant by pplv two pneumonia like organisms they are 0 0.1 micrometer a bit bigger or smaller than viruses okay and uh, typical bacteria typical bacteria means what if you take the average of a bacteria it will be 1 to 2 micrometer it will be ranging from 1 to 5 micrometer also so which one bacteria and if you see the cell si uh, size of a eukaryotic cell eukaryotic cell means cell which contains nucleus and organ bound nucleus organ bound organelles sorry membrane bound organelles it is called eukaryotic cell so eukaryotic cell size will be how much 10 to 20 micrometers understood now it means inside the cell bacteria also can enter inside the cell pplv can enter inside the cell virus also can enter because the size of the viruses and bacteria is much smaller when compared to the size of the cell you know so this data which is present here i hope it is better for you to remember the question can be asked on this one clear so next we study about prokaryotic cells the cells which are present in their initial stages or there are no complex structures such cells become them as prokaryotic cells you know so here what is the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells so here in uh, prokaryotic cells no membrane bound nucleus is present and no membrane bound organal surface okay ma it means they are not bound by any membrane such organelles if they are present and if nucleus is absent then such type of cells we call them as prokaryotic cells are you able to understand and prokaryotic cells consist of what the bacteria is made of them blue green algae is also made of them microplasmas ppl all of them they are made up of prokaryotic cells so they are generally smaller and multiply more rapidly than the eukaryotic cells so this also may be an important thing. clearly here where this prokaryotic cells are present that also is an important uh, point okay, no? so this is how bacteria looks like so there are many shapes in the form of bacteria no? this is one of the shape and here we have bacteria this is cyanobacteria and this is mycoplasma or ppl clear number so this is about uh, what prokaryotic cells they are made of so basic difference is what ma organ bound nucleus is present and organ bound organelles also they are sorry they are not present they are absent okay okay so bacteria basically there are four shapes four basic shapes are present in the case of bacteria so one is bacillus shaped or you can call it as rod like structures so this one here which you are seeing they are called as bacillus shaped second one is coccus shaped okay ma or you can call them as spherical shaped so this is shapes which you are seeing that is called as spherical shaped clear now and vibrio vibrio means what comma comma shape okay ma? so here you are seeing this uh, comma shaped bacteria and a spiral which can be spiral so here you are seeing a spiral shaped bacteria no? okay so they are just like a springs so these are the four shapes of bacteria bacillus coccus vibrio and spiral bacillus rod shape Focus, spherical shape, vibrio, comma shape, spiral means spiral shape. Okay. Next, prokaryotic cells. What are the cell organelles which are present inside this prokaryotic cells? So, cell envelope is present, ma. Cell envelope is present, and this is cell envelope. Again, it can be divided into three parts that we will study later. Okay, ma. And here also I have written glycocalyx cell wall and a plasma membrane so cell envelope is made up of three structures what are they one is glycocalyx second one is cell wall the middle region 
and the innermost region which is called as plasma and what is the outermost part of cell envelope glycocalyx is the outermost part clear now middle one is cell wall and the innermost one is the plasma membrane so mesosome and chromatophores what are this mesosomes and chromatophores now they are the structures which are just like foldings in the plasma membrane so the innermost layer is called plasma membrane first one is glycocalyx middle one is cell wall and the third one is the plasma membrane so in this plasma membrane there will be some foldings are able to understand and they have a lot of functions also they are responsible for cell division they are responsible for transfer of uh, cytoplasm from one cell to another cell there are many functions so if this plasma membrane is folded such a folded structures we can call them as mesosomes and chromatophores clear so folded structures in plasma membrane so then uh, what is meant by chromatophores here membrane associated vesicle for photosynthesis so this is the function of chromatophores so these are also folded structures where no inside the plasma membrane and they are responsible for what they are responsible for helping photosynthesis understood no that is the function of chromatophores okay then we have nucleides flagella pd and fimbriae ribosomes and inclusion points these are the different cell organelles in the case of prokaryotic cells clear no see my question can be asked like what are the organelles which are present in prokaryotic and what are the cells which are what are the organelles which are present in eukaryotic so question can be asked on the terms so you should be very careful about what are the different organelles in prokaryotic and different organelles in eukaryotic clear no nucleoid what is meant by nucleoid so here you are seeing this uh, structure no this structure you are seeing no so this total is called as nucleus where the total genome information is present here in the form of dna are you able to understand that? this is total arrangement we can call it as nucleoid in the case of prokaryotic cells so in the case of uh, eukaryotic cells instead of nucleoid you will find nucleus will be present are you able to understand no? so see here so irregularly shaped region of prokaryotic cells that contains all or most of the genetic material it means the to total genetic information it is present inside this nucleoid clear no that is the function of nucleoid and it is irregularly shaped but in the case of eukaryotic cells it is not so much irregularly shaped anta anta daridrama ne irregularity undadu ikkada in eukaryotic cells clear no so flagella what is meant by flagella here you are seeing this uh, structure this structure is called as uh, flagella flagella is the plural form flagellum is the singular form so this is responsible for uh, motion of this cells understood no there are many single cell structures also no prokaryotes most of them they are single cell structures clear no and for the motion or movement of this uh, cells uh, you require this uh, tail which is called as flagella clear no next pili and fimbria so pili and fimbria actually the singular forms are pilus and uh, fimbria you able to understand no so this pili and fimbria they are they are uh, hair like structures which are responsible for fasima uh, for example this cell wants to get attached with some surfaces okay so definitely cells will be attached with surfaces no either base of the seas or with the shores of the oceans you will find a lot of bacteria and lot of uh, other things so they are attached to the surfaces so this attachment is possible only with the help of this pili and fimbria are able to understand no? they are responsible for what they are responsible for attachment okay so pili and fimbria both are almost the same clear next ribosomes so they are the production centers of proteins and inclusion points so all the other regions where food material will be stored or proteins are present all the remaining parts we call them as inclusion bodies are you able to understand so what is the function of inclusion bodies for storage of food material and storage of proteins that is the function of this inclusion bodies 
So these are the different organelles which are present in the prokaryotic cells. If you remember these functions, then only you can clearly differentiate between a prokaryotic cell and a eukaryotic cell. Because presence will be always based on comparison only. Biology and DNA comparison. Without comparison, if you study, then you cannot answer the bits properly. Okay. Next. Cell envelope. That is the outermost layer of the cell. It is called as cell envelope. So cell envelope, again, I am dividing into how many types. So one is glycocalyx, cell wall, as well as the plasma membrane. So in the figure, you can see that one. So this outermost layer, this is called as glycocalyx. And the middle layer that is called as cell wall, and there is an innermost layer which is called as plasma membrane. So these are the different uh, structures. Okay. So glycocalyx, outermost layer, its composition and thickness vary in different bacteria. See, my glycocalyx doesn't have the same thickness in every bacteria. It varies from bacteria to bacteria. So it may be a simple loose layer, or it may be a thick layer also. Are a very hard layer also. Some bacteria will be smoother, some bacteria will be tough. Are able to understand? That depends on the nature of the glycocalyx. So slime layer, slime layer means what? The outer surface is very smooth. That is called as slime layer. Capsule means outer layer is very tough. So this language also you should remember. So uh, glycocalyx may be slime layer also, it can be capsule also. Okay. Next, plasma membrane. So, the inner layer, it is semi-permeable in nature and interacts with the outside. What is meant by semi-permeable? See, by in between this uh, glycocalyx and plasma membrane, cell wall also will be present. I think he forgot to give about cell wall. So, plasma membrane, semi-permeable means what? Semi-permeable means it can allow substances out of the cell and into the cell. This nature is called as semi-permeable. It is not completely permeable or it is not completely opaque. Opaque means what? It doesn't allow anything. But a cell membrane is such a structure which is semi-permeable in nature. It can partially allow the molecules inside and outside of the cell. So therefore it interacts with the outside. So it is structurally similar to that of the eukaryotes. So plasma membrane is almost the same in the case of prokaryotes as well as eukaryotes. Okay. So based on the types of cell envelopes and response to gram straining, bacteria are of two types. What is meant by gram straining? Gram straining is a method of adding color to a particular region. Are you able to understand now? So to check whether for example, uh, we take human body and this was a old tradition, old method of finding whether bacteria is present in our body or not. So they will take some color, some pigment and they will add it to that particular region. Are you able to understand? If that particular region is maintaining its color, it means bacteria is present in that region. Are you able to understand? So this method of checking whether bacteria is present or not, this is called as gram stress. Okay. And again, bacteria can be of two types, gram-positive or gram-negative. Gram-positive means what? If, they are, if you are adding some color and they are retaining that color, they are maintaining that color, then such bacteria we can call them as gram-positive bacteria. And gram-negative bacteria means what? You are adding some color, but it is not maintaining its color. It means in that test, you are not able to identify whether bacteria is present or not. Such type of bacteria, we can call them as gram-negative bacteria, okay. And now, see here some examples of gram-positive and gram-negative are given by. So, Staphylococcus aureus, it is gram-positive. Gram-positive means what? If you add a color to that one, it will maintain that color, okay. So, easily you can identify this bacteria in that affected region, okay. Whereas, Escherichia coli, this is a useful bacteria. So this Escherichia coli, it is gram negative. It means even if you add color to this bacteria, it doesn't uh, retain that color. So you cannot identify that bacteria with the help of color. Okay. So that is gram positive and gram negative. So 
who invented this uh, method ma a scientist named christian grant identified this method of identifying the bacteria clear no next mesosomes mesosomes and chromatophores clear no so it is formed by infolding of plasma membrane so here you will find that this plasma membrane is folded no plasma membrane is folded no? that folded structure is called as what it is called as mesosome understood no so it includes vesicles it includes tubules it includes lamina so this mesosomes consists of vesicles also tubules also lamella also are able to understand no so therefore what is meant by vesicles so it, these are tiny sacs uh, that transport material within or outside the cell these are called vesicles or you can remember them like vehicles vehicles we use for our vehicles no and the same function is done by this vesicles clear no what vesicles do they transport molecules inside and outside of the cell are able to understand no that is why they are called as vesicles okay so therefore what is the function of mesosome function of mesosome is transportation also okay next they contain tubules tubules means tube like structures for doing what these tubules are responsible when cell divides when cell divides into another cell cytoplasm should be transferred no so for a transfer of this cytoplasm these tubules are responsible are able to understand and lamella so thin layer membrane or plate of tissue so just a layer of tissue is called as lamella so these are the different organelles which are present again inside this mesosome so vesicles are present tubules are present lamella is present okay and here we see this uh, plasma so small circular double stranded dna that is distinct from chromosomal dna is called as plasma are able to understand no? so here you are seeing a structure called plasmid no? so what is that plasmid it also contains some dna but that dna is different from that dna which is present in the nucleus in nucleoid we have main dna no? are able to understand no? this plasmid also has some dna but that dna and this dna are structurally similar but their functions are different are able to understand sima we have recently a pandemic is going on which is called as covid okay so you identify one vaccine so after some days this virus it gets so Uh, what you call the resistant to this vaccine understood now so this resistance is given by this plasmid the plasmid me kanipistundi kada that will give resistance to the virus or bacteria from out of uh, attacking the uh, enzymes or attacking chemicals are able to understand so that will store the information uh, from outside things okay that is the function of this plasmid okay and here you have 70s ribosomes no 70s ribosome means what that is the size of a ribosome size is represented by 70s 20s 50s and 30s like this understood no so 30s plus 50s they convert into 70s so these are some size measuring terms in biology are able to understand that's so all this you should have an idea about what is happening here next function of mesosome so mesosome it has three organelles no and what are the different functions we are seeing here first is cell wall formation forming of cell wall dna replication where dna replication is uh, useful when new cell is created when new cell is created dna should be transferred no so that dna replication is also done by that folding structure which is called as mesosome for a distribution of chromosomes to daughter cells chromosomes should be distributed for that also mesosome is responsible for respiration as well as secretion also mesosomes are responsible so these functions they are very very important direct questions can be asked clear no for secretion 
and respiration also mesosomes are responsible how respiration how it is useful for respiration for respiration gases should be exchanged with them oxygen carbon dioxide should be exchanged so exchange will take place with the help of vesicles clear to so therefore mesosomes are responsible even for respiration also because they transfer the molecules of the gases to increase the surface area of plasma membrane and enzymatic content also mesosomes are responsible see if you see such infolding are you able to understand what happens to the total surface of the plasma membrane total surface area increases so for increasing the surface area also they are responsible understood so what are the functions of mesosome cell wall formation dna replication transfer of chromosomes and distribution of chromosomes respiration and secretion and to increase the surface area of the plasma membrane okay next so chromatophores what is meant by chromatophores they are also infoldings mesosomes are also infoldings in plasma membrane chromatophores are also infoldings in plasma membrane. but these chromatophores they have some coloring pigments also are able to understand so pigment containing membranous infoldings in some prokaryotic examples is cyanobacteria it means these chromatophores you don't find in every prokaryote you will find in only in selected prokaryotes examples is cyanobacteria in cyanobacteria you can find chromatophores okay and what is present in chromatophores pigment coloring pigments are present which gives color to this chromatophores understood now that's it the nucleoid so what is meant by nucleoid ma the irregular structure containing information or genetic material or dna that is called as nucleoid clear so this total irregular structure i can call it as nucleoid so it is formed of non membranous naked naked means what naked means membrane is not present a layer of coating is not present okay super kind to know mineral layer to know okay ma so non membranous or you can call it as naked right it means plasma membrane such type of membranes are not present so if membranes are completely absent that is why they are called as prokaryotes okay ma in the case of eukaryotes almost every organelle they have a uh, what you call uh, membrane is present but all of the all the organelles inside this prokaryotes they are membrane absent organelles clear now and circular genomic dna what is the shape of the dna ma circular so single chromosome genetic material and protein so it is formed of these structures understood now so chromosomes are present genetic material is present as well as proteins also present in the case of this nucleoids so many bacteria have small circular dna which is also called as plasmid outside the genomic dna are able to understand ma it gives some unique phenotypic characters example resistance to antibiotics to bacteria okay ma so just now we discussed about the plasmids no? what is meant by plasmids it is also genetic material but this genetic material is different to the genetic material of present inside the nucleoid and what is the function of this plasmid giving resistance to other factors that is the function of a plasmid are able to understand we define a direct question so stop ma jagratta ga patti patta okay so next flagella okay ma so pili flagella both are same so these are thin filamentous extensions from the cell wall of motile bacteria so they are filamentous extensions so sorry ma flagella we are discussing no uh, fibri and pili they are different. we are discussing about flagella so in motile bacteria what is meant by motile bacteria moving bacteria okay ma so their number and arrangement are varied in different bacteria it means some bacteria they have a single flagellum some bacteria have two some bacteria have three four five like this 
it depends on the nature of the bacteria so bacterial flagellum has three parts this is another important bit flagellum this tail like structure again it is divided into three parts so one is the filament one is the hook and one is the vessel body so filament hook and vessel body are the three parts present in the flagellum so, filament is the longest portion and extends from cell surface to the cell outside okay ma so out of filament hook and vessel body which is the longest one filament is the longest one. so extends from cell surface to cell outside so from surface to outside part whatever you see that you can call it as the filament and inside the cell in between the cell you can find hook as well as vessel body also understood now so here some arrangement is given i don't think uh, it is required okay next is so pili and fimbri what is pili and fimbri ma small hair like structures which are responsible for attaching the bacteria that is called as pili as well as fimbri so here you are seeing this uh, small structures ma no? these are small small structures they are called as pili and fimbri clear okay, no so these are surface structures that have no role in motility which means they are not responsible for movement so pili singular is pilus or elongated tubular structures made up of a special protein which is called as pilin so pili is made up of what pili is made up of a protein called pilin so fimbriae are small bristle like fibers sprouting out of the cell so almost pili and fimbriae they refer to same thing clear no so in some bacteria they help to attach the bacteria to rocks in streams and to the host tissues it means pili and fimbriae they are responsible for attaching attaching to either to the host cell or attaching to rocks or soil for this this fimbri pili and fimbriae they are responsible clear no next to ribosomes so they are associated with plasma membrane of the prokaryotes so inside prokaryotes where you find ribosomes Okay, ribosomes they are present in the cytoplasm itself where in prokaryotic cells but the same ribosomes they are present in many parts in the case of eukaryotic cells they are present in cytoplasm also they are attached to endoplasmic retinal reticulum also they are present inside some nucleus regions also okay but in the case of prokaryotic cells where you find these ribosomes only in the cytoplasm because other organelles they are absent so eukaryotic cell is a very complex cell prokaryotic cell is a simple cell so mostly you will find cytoplasm on and inclusion bodies are there so ribosomes are associated with uh, mostly cytoplasm and plasma membrane of prokaryotes so they are about 15 nanometer to 20 nanometer in uh, size okay so they are made up of two sub units of 50 s and 30 s So 50 years plus 30 years, they make up what? They make up 70 years. Okay, ma. 50 years is one size, 20 years, 30 years is another size. When they both combine, then the total size we can call it as 70 years. Okay. So, and this is some uh, what you call the uh, what you call the parameters in the case of biology. S means. Uh, So sedimentation coefficient, which is a measure of density and size. These are called ribosomes. So here you can see in this figure, 30 and 7, 50, they are combining to become 70. 50 plus 30, 80. That is called 70. 80. That is according to the total size. Are you able to understand? No? See, if I, if I take uh, one ball of radius r and another ball of radius r. If I come both combine both of them, radius will not become two r. <laughs> radius two r over. Same case here also. Understood? No? Okay. Now see, now what is the function of these ribosomes? We will study it. So ribosomes are the site of translation. Translation means what? Ma? Protein synthesis. It means proteins are manufactured basically by what? Ribosomes. Understood? No. So several ribosomes may attach to mRNA 
what is mrna single stranded rna molecule is known as mrna so this chain you are seeing now my here green color chain that green color chain i can call it as mrna only one strand is present one wire is present strand means wire single strand clear now so several ribosomes may attach to single mrna to form a chain which is called as polyribosomes are you can call it as polysome okay ma ribosomes of a polysome translate mrna into proteins that is what is happening here are you able to understand so this 70s structures and 30s structures they go and attach to the mrna okay ma so from this that after attachment what the uh, what i call that i call it as a polysome after attachment or you can call it as poly ribosome poly means many many ribosomes okay ma and these poly ribosomes they produce a chain which is called as polypeptide chain and a group of polypeptide chains is called as proteins understood so that is how proteins are manufactured here so see my here you can see this uh, chains coming out of this uh, what you call ribosomes no? okay ma so these chains are finally they create uh, this polypeptide chains understood ma so that is how proteins are manufactured okay next inclusion bodies what is meant by inclusion bodies all the bodies which store food material all the bodies which store proteins all the extra material we call them as inclusion bodies in which type of cells in prokaryotic cells okay ma so they are non membranous they don't have membrane so this difference you should not forget prokaryotic cell organelles does not have a membrane in eukaryotic cells almost all of them they have a membrane Are you able to understand that is the difference so non membranous stored uh, reserved material seen freely in the cytoplasm of prokaryotic cells it means whatever cells they are responsible for storing food material that you can call them as uh, inclusion bodies understood no examples are what phosphate granules cyanophysian granules glycogen granules glass vacuoles these are some of the examples of inclusion bodies inclusion body is not the name of a single organism many organelles which store food material and proteins that is called as inclusion bodies examples are phosphate granules cyanophysian granules glycogen granules gas vacuoles etc clear now so here there is an exception which is given gas vacuoles are found in blue green and purple and green photosynthetic bacteria understood now question can be asked on this also where gas vacuoles are formed they can be formed in blue green algae they can be formed in purple and green fire photo photosynthetic bacteria clear now that's it so that completes our uh, discussion on prokaryotic cells okay no? so tomorrow we will study about this eukaryotic cells and the